I've been, I mean, I'm not surprised, but I've been just flabbergasted. Uh, you know, Trump was shown to fight. A lot of the things he fought for were terrible. Uh, a lot of things he fought for were borderline illegal. Didn't really worry so much about the courts, constitution, or any of that. Biden, um, it, it just seems like he's in fetal position on all these on all these things. You, you're talking about history, Richard Nixon, other presidents. He says he can't do anything on gas prices, food prices, coronavirus. Uh, pretty much he says he can't do anything, but we were fed that this is the guy who could get things done. Uh, so taking off your economist hat, you say this is a political problem, but isn't this also a, a, a leadership problem? Uh, call me a conspiracy theorist. I also think his donors don't want him to do a lot because most of his donors are probably making bank right now. Yes, his donors are very happy. They've been talking for 20 years about a recovery that I still haven't seen, and I'm looking for it, and I'm trained to identify it when it's out there. They're making believe. They pumped a lot of money into this economy for 20 years. It didn't do what it should have done, is put Americans to work to transform our economy into an ecological non-disaster and so on. It didn't do that. The money went and took a detour. It went into the stock market where the big inflation we're now experiencing in the so-called real economy, that's been going on for 20 years in the stock market. But since the people, 10% of Americans own the stock market, the rest of us are excluded from it, the 10% at the top, the people who own the shares, they're so happy. This is the inflation of my uh, monthly uh, stock portfolio. I'm, I'm recovered. Boy, am I recovered. And the help with the rest of the population. It, it is spectacular. But what do you expect from Mr. Biden? He's, he's the senator from Delaware. That's where most American corporations are registered because it's the most corporate friendly state in the union for most of the last century. And he's their senator. Of course, he's sensitive, not just to the donations that come in, crucial as they are, but to the whole ethos, the whole way of thinking. Look at Mr. Powell, who's the same thing. You know, the mon monopolist, he doesn't have Kim competition. You know, he, he, he can raise his price because he can. The morality of it, the economic consequences of it, he's oblivious. He doesn't, he doesn't know to think about it, let alone to care about it. And these are the people that are running the system. You're choosing between the tired, old establishment of the Democratic Party, which is still in power, and the tired old Republican leadership, which is out of power, being replaced by people for whom there is no politics that isn't symbolic theater. Everything else, you know, I mean, Mr. Trump was in office for four years. The inequality of our society got worse, every one of them. The un injustice of the economic distribution of wealth got worse. Our relations with the rest of the world got worse. Uh, the bitterness and anger of the American people built up over those four years and from before too. So that's now exploding in a quick rate of our jobs, people walking away from their jobs by the millions every month. We've never seen that before. A revival of a labor unionization movement. We see all the symptoms of a, of a society casting about without a clue as to what to do to solve its problems, except to exchange every few years Republican theater uh, uh, clowns for a Democratic equivalent. And someone comes along and finally says, you know, I'm going to do something a little different, Bernie and people like that, and they run away, the rest of the establishment runs away. If I might change the subject just a little, but to get at it from another way. Sure. Last Sunday was an election that needs to be understood because of what it teaches Americans. You had for the first time in modern French history a clear choice. The middle, center right, it's called in France, with a sitting president who got reelected as president six weeks earlier. Emmanuel Macron. That's the center of, of French politics, center right. 
just like we have here. Then there is a far right. There the leader is Marine Le Pen, uh, coming from a long list of extreme right-wing, anti-immigrant, nationalistic, all of that. But, but here's the new thing. The otherwise disorganized, diffused left, which had no political party of real power, decided to do something about that. They unified the whole French left. They all got together to offer, and here's what was new to the French voter, a real choice. Here's the left, here's the right, and here's the right center. Macron the center, um, Le Pen the right, and a man named Mélenchon, that's his name, the leader of the left. By the way, he's much more further to the left than Bernie Sanders is. So it's a real clear choice. Here was the outcome. The sitting president got 38% of the vote. He didn't get a third. Over a two-thirds of the French people voted that they don't want him to be in charge. I mean, he's weaker. He's done. Politically, He it, it may take a long time for him to pass away, but he's out. Who came in second? The left. They got 31.6%, seven percentage points less than the sitting president in the middle. And where was the Le Pen, the right winger? She got, ready, 17%. The left is twice as strong in France as the right. And if young people who abstain in huge numbers, as they have for some years now, when you poll young people, they're overwhelmingly pro-left. So if they become part of the electorate over the next few years, we're going to see a socialist, clearly no running away from it, be the new leader of France. All politics in Europe is shifting now. And why am I telling you? because I don't think it's very different in the United States either. If the left here could get its act together, all the different components, then we would finally see whether the, the Trump theater is any stronger in this country than Le Pen's theater in France ever was. And what would the left? What would the left here getting its act together look like to you? Because a lot of people have a different definition these days of what the left is. Right. Uh, I would take my clue again from the French. The left in the France that unified includes the French Communist Party, the French Socialist Party, the French Green Party, and then the those are all relatively small. The biggest is Mélenchon's own party, uh, which is uh, called in French La France Insoumise, which means uh, the French unbowed, the French standing up uh, for what they think is right. I don't think that's so different. I think it would in this country, it would mean the far left, the medium left, the moderate left, and everybody who's comfortable and remember, being comfortable is not just about what you like, but it's being oppositional in relationship to Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump and Joseph Biden and Janet Yellen and all of that. And you put all the people together who could be brought together if a campaign to do that was really launched by all the right figures. That's what they did in France. It took them decades to get to this point. I'm not minimizing the difficulty, but wow, for the first test of how that might work out, all of Europe, I can assure you, only in the United States, not even in Canada, is this being buried. This is the number one change in the political landscape of Europe that we have seen. It completely dwarfs Ukraine or anything having to do with that in terms of redesigning, redefining. Every European is thinking, oh, my God, 
all of this nonsense about the right wing, the left wing gets its act together and gets two to one bigger vote. Whoa, whoa. What is it? What's What have we missed? What did we not understand? What political thinking was going on in our population? You know, the French have been taught that communism and socialism are terrible, made no difference. This unified left included communists and socialists and all the rest of it may, didn't turn away anybody. This is very, very profound stuff. And it's about global capitalism in the West in a very, very, very difficult position. Let me, let me say one thing on a personal level that may intrigue you. Uh, I got my PhD in economics at Yale University. My classmate at Yale at the time I was getting my PhD was a young woman named Janet Yellen. She had the same professors I did. She sat in the same classrooms I did. She heard the same lectures I did. She got the same degree I did within a couple years of the time I did. So I know exactly what she knows. And I can compare it, but because it's what I learned too, I can compare it with the way she talks now. The way she talks now, I hear as reading a script in which very old Clinton, Obama, Biden bleh, are, have written out the same economic speech they have given 50 times in the last 20 years. That's not her. She right. knows better, way better. She may not say it. You know, I, I don't know her personally. I can't speak for how she organizes her life. But I, I can tell you, I can draw a conclusion. People are being forced to say and do things that they somewhere know that's not right. They don't know what else to do. I'm not saying they're dishonest. I don't think they go out there and tell a lie in the sense of telling a, a factual statement they know not to be true. These are not Donald Trumps who make it up as they go along. But they are people caught in a disconnect between what is going on and what they used to be able to talk about and the way they act in a public uh, life position and ought to make all of the rest of us realize how deep the doo-doo is in which we are standing. Right. Can I ask you also just to uh, correct one thing? Uh, you have people like Bill Maher, some other uh, simple-minded simple minded people, uh, pushing the line that it was the government and all the money we spent during COVID, the coronavirus relief package, yada, 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 that that has caused inflation. Uh, I mean, I'm not an economist, but I'm pretty sure that actually saved the economy. Uh, it didn't go far enough in my book, but uh, yeah. saved a lot of working class people. But can you kind of break that down? Uh, Absolutely. I'd be glad to. Uh, he invites, by the way, a person on the panel when he makes the, Bill Maher I'm talking about, when he makes the sta strange statements, he invites two people. One is a professional economist who says, keeps saying things like, it's just simple economics. I wish I had been there. I've been on Bill Maher's program at Bill Maher's uh, invitation. I wasn't there the other night. Uh, but that man wasn't doing simple economics. He was doing simple-minded economics, which is a little different. He had another person on there, a journalist named Crystal Ball. She repeatedly corrected the economist. She was absolutely on target, very clear, spoke well, had the ideas right. Bill was the one, Bill Maher, who was confused. And let me explain. And I did this a few minutes ago, but I'm going to do it again because I know it's difficult. If the government pumps money in, let's set aside, and you're quite right about this, Jordan, let's set aside that it was in a moment where Republicans and Democrats alike were freaked out at the level of economic despair and collapse. It happened in a, in a small way in the so-called dot-com crisis in the spring of 2000. 
It happened in a much bigger way in the so-called Great Recession of 2008 and 9. And then it happened in the biggest way yet in this century in 2020. An economy disintegrating and the government decided to put all its money on a monetary policy, flood the economy with money. And they did it each time. So it was done to save us from a collapse and a depression. It is really crude Monday morning quarterback nonsense to suddenly decide, gee, we shouldn't have done that. You had no time at that point, And basically, you had very little disagreement. These things went rammed right through because everybody was scared out of their wits about what was happening to the big capitalist economy. Having said that, let me remind you, if the government pumps money in, it's only an inflation if employers respond to the money being pumped in by raising prices. If they don't, the extra money doesn't produce an inflation. That is up to the employers. If you're angry, they're the ones you have to be angry at. We've been pumping money into this troubled American capitalism since the beginning of this century. That's now 22 years. For 19 and a half of those years, 20 actually, we had no inflation. So the simple-minded notion, hey, you pump money in, that's why you have the inflation, is disproven by the fact that we were pumping in money at unprecedented levels for 20 years, and we had no inflation. All the money, as I told you, went in the stock market and exploded there, and everybody applauded that by calling it a recovery, which it wasn't. But again, to, to the idea that the money that was spent by the government caused the inflation is so preposterous on the surface that you, you wonder again what kind of person repeats that junk. And then one last point. If you actually want to believe that government spending is the culprit, then you have the bizarre display by that, I don't really want to call him an economist, that Bill Maher chose to have on his program. He knows which of the dollars the government was spending caused the inflation. The money given to working people as an extra on the unemployment. The checks sent to average Americans to get them through their unemployment and the crashed economy. Well, how do you know it was that dollar and not the dollar that was given in a tax cut to big business in December of 2017? How do you know it wasn't a, a trillion dollars of, of defense spending? If you want to look at government spending, well, you got to deal with all of it. You can't tell me this dollar spent caused an inflation, but not that one. That's just Republican hackery. That's fawning, giving the military everything it asks for, and then nickel and diming social welfare for the mass of people. That's what the Republican Party is there for. That's what a good part of the Democratic Party mimics, but that's not working anymore. That's not going to cut it. The problems of this economy are way bigger than these kinds of cheap political theater can handle.